right, everybody, welcome to today's Retro Tech. And first off, I have to admit, I was wrong. And I was wrong in my last video about the Sony KV27V26. And actually, I'm quite happy that I was wrong. See, there were some things that I said in the last video, and then I posted the last video, and then I had a lot of comments and some tips and suggestions that I got from the community. And I'm very happy about all the tips and thank you so much. And let's just go through what I learned. All right, so I wanna start here by looking at the remote control for this television. Again, this is the Sony KV27V26 CRT. This is the specific remote for that TV. And it's a, it's a pretty standard remote. So uh, it says Sony TV. Replacements are available and it's pretty standard so it could look the same for your TV your Sony CRT if it was a KV or around the mid to late 90s like this one And the reason we're looking at the remote today is because this is how you access the service menu There is a service menu for this TV and for this line of TVs and we're going to show you how to uh, Access that today and you have to have the remote to do that and so, with the TV turned off, we're going to use this remote and go ahead and pull up that menu. And to do that, we need to first hit the display button, then the number 5, then volume up, and then our TV power. Let's go through that one more time to be safe. Again, with the power turned off on your television, start by pressing display, the number 5, volume up and then power on when you complete the steps correctly your TV will power on and you will notice that you see service and then a value and some numbers in the top of the screen this means you've got your okay so once you have this pulled up you still need to use your remote and you can press the numbers one and the numbers four on the remote and that will change if you see the top right corner of the screen that will change whatever setting you are on so you can change through that and uh, for example right now it's in the service menu the first thing that came up is V size which is the vertical screen size and you will see there's already a value put in all these so size the next one is vertical position which just means your center and then you've got some other weird things. If you go up from there, um, the next one that's important is this linearity, vertical linearity. And this also, SCO, is another kind of linearity adjustment. Horizontal position, horizontal size, pin amp, upper pin, lower pin, pin phase, and then vertical bow vertical angle and a couple other things about the colors and sub bright sub settings etc but you don't need to worry about those things so what I can do is I'll show you just an example of some of these let me pull up a calibration um, screen and show you what I'm working with first thing I'd like to show you is the Super Nintendo that I use to calibrate with this is the Super Nintendo uh, Junior, or it used to be called Mini before they came out with the classics. And this one has been modified to output RGB, and it has the better video quality signal coming out of it. And this is the one that I use to calibrate with, and then I'll be using this SD to SNES cartridge. And I've got my ROM loaded on this SD card, and that's going to be the 240p test suite. Okay, the first screen I've got is my calibration screen, my large grid. And as you can see, my horizontal position is shifted over. What you need to know about if you make any changes in this, you use the number three and the number uh, six button on the remote to go up and down on your value. But when you do that, know that there's, it's, not gonna, it's just gonna save that change. So if you ever want to know if you're concerned, just make sure you know and write down maybe what the original settings are before you make a change. 
So for example, if you can see, when I press that, it shifts the screen horizontally. So that is very helpful. I do want to show you one other thing though, and this is quite often the case with many monitors and televisions. This is a television, but I've seen this on some older Sony monitors too, where if you switch it between RGB and another input, for example, right now we're using uh, composite input, but if I switch to RGB, see how the screen centeredness changes and you get a different setting position, so just remember that. It's generally speaking only the horizontal position that is affected in that. So if you want to have uh, it be centered on the RGB line, it probably won't be centered on the composite and S-video lines because it will just be shifted over a little bit. So just remember that whatever setting or whatever uh, you're using, again, this one's been RGB modded, so... I'm going to keep it at centeredness for RGB like that. But see, when I switch over to RGB, there's no operating menu, so the service menu doesn't show up, so I can't see what I'm adjusting. So I have to try to use the other inputs to calibrate and work my way through it. This is another good screen to look at because there's a black background. You can see we've got our uh, linearity pulled up, but uh, there's just the different things here I told you that you can ch change through and that's just the same with any TV. If you'd like me to go through that more I can in the future but I just wanted to show that menu being available and that you can definitely change the uh, geometry settings using that menu and when you're done you can simply turn the TV off and turn it back on and the menu will be gone but your settings will be saved. So at the end of the day, I also made a couple of other errors. I kept referring this as being a monitor. I'm sorry, I work with monitors a lot. So it's really just a television because it has a built-in tuner and it was built as a TV originally. But it um, function is now almost like a monitor would from that era. And so it's, it's just a little bit something I made a mistake on. Another thing, I said that you can't adjust the convergence on this thing really. Well, that's kind of not true. You can use the rings and adjust around the yoke. Uh, it's just that's real tedious. I did that and then I put some epoxy on there so I didn't want to deal with that again but that's a very tedious job one that I've never covered on a video before maybe I will someday but uh, it's just that's really tough. Yeah and unfortunately there's just not an, a knob like they have in BVMs and PVMs that you turn and actually just changes the whole convergence of the screen at one time. That's just more of a convenient feature a feature of the higher end monitors. Okay, I've got my TV calibrated the way I want it. I was able to expand the sides and get it really nice and sharp as well as I could. And to be honest with you, that really improves my opinion of this thing. I love it now. And I think that uh, since it has such a larger screen area, I definitely recommend it as an alternative to any PVM or BVM. Now, I want to take it inside. I'll show you how I'm going to set it up inside and show you where I'm going to place it, show you the systems I'll have hooked up to it, and we'll see how it works. Okay, so here we have it, the finished product. Inside the armoire. All right, folks, there you have it, the finished product in the armoire. So let's just go ahead and let it run here for a second and see um, how it looks. All right, everything's working perfectly. We've got to set it back up in the den, and it uh, looks great. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, we'll be doing a new video with another CRT this week about safety and possible RGB mod so please stay tuned for that thanks again for watching retro tech please like share and subscribe if you haven't already and have a wonderful day